Good evening. It's fun right now. And welcome to the PSTA board meeting of September 30th. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask you to stand and uh, Mr. Guyton, after a moment of silence, would you lead the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> it is now time for public comment. We welcome uh, anyone who wishes to speak to fill out one of these little green cards. Uh, there is a process where if you want to consolidate, you can fill out a, a sheet like this and, and share your time. And um, the items that uh, we'll be speaking on are any general public comment or items on the consent agenda. And so I will call you up in the order of the, the comment. The cards were submitted to us. Uh, the first one is Vivian Peters. It is on an action item. Uh, it, it says 4E, which is the uh, transit shelter cleaning service, and we we would take those comments at this time. I would like I would ask you to do it now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my name is Vivian Pierce. I live in Largo. Uh, the shelter cleaning service has gone is very, very bad. The shelter that I use the most, which is on the southwest corner of Missouri and Largo, is cigarette butts, beer can rings, all sorts of trash all the time. Gateway Mall is horrible. They changed the mulch down there so it blends in better with the cigarette butts. It shreds instead of little round cubes. But the sidewalks need to be steam cleaned. As I said, overall it looks very, very bad. And these are not the only two. But the shelter people, whoever is doing it, have definitely, they're not keeping up with it. And I understand some of these are high use shelters, but they definitely, you know, ha I don't care if they have to go by every day. As I said, this is what they contracted for, so let them start living up to the contract. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Peters. Uh, the next person that has submitted a comment is uh, Sherry Mercer. Mercer? Hi. Welcome. Good evening. I am back, and I'm not happy uh -oh. at all. I'm going to put a pin on her comment about the bus shelters. There are a lot of bus shelters that have those plastic things that you put your schedules and your routes behind that are very dingy, very dirty, and a lot of kids write their doggone codes and scripts and everything else on them. Those need to get changed very, very badly. So I'm going to have a little PS. To, and I agree with her about a lot of the shelters. A lot of them don't have trash cans, and that's why you got a lot of trash around there. That is a litter problem, and you guys could get fined for the litter problem. Not the most riders, you are. So that needs to get rectified. We need trash cans at every single doggone bus stop there is in this county. And those shelter uh, things need to be cleaned up or replaced. And uh, the bus fly fly service, needs to be a little bit better, but I wrote on one bus that didn't have Wi-Fi at all. It could be one of, one of the ones on your list that could be going bye-bye pretty soon, but um, plus you have a couple of white ones with the orange spots from back in the 80s that are still running. We need to get rid of those too because they don't mess with the rest of them. <laughs> but the Wi-Fi is pretty good except for a couple that I've been on that had no Wi-Fi service. I turned one in a few days ago, so that needs to get taken care of. And, but I mean, 
not happy about is what happened two and a half weeks ago. The way you guys, every single darn one of you, served your agenda on the rate increases past everybody that spoke in front of you a couple of weeks ago about the, the um, disappointment that some of these rates are going to be increased. A lot of them did not agree with it, especially on the NPO Transportation Disappointment Program. And you just pushed that agenda through and passed it through, did not listen to anybody, anybody, about their concerns about these rate increases. Nobody, uh, not one of you listened to us. Not one. We need a new board. We need a brand new board that will listen to people, take their concerns into, consider into consideration, and listen to the small ones that are lesser than you, as Jesus would say, and take their concerns into consideration instead of passing your agenda through without even listening. And I got one question to ask you. Route 75, we need to get it extended. The rate, wait times need to be shortened from an hour to 30 minutes. And why is it that the 75 leaves Tyrone Mall at 7.30 instead of 15 after 7, and we have to wait an extra 15 minutes? If you don't know the answer, find someone that does. But the, this schedule needs to get extended. Wait times need to be cut short Thank to 30 you. minutes. Uh, could I ask you to uh, see um, Mr. Bradford in the back and uh, make sure that we have the, or Ms. Uh, Ms. Forshers back there who has his, her hand up and to get um, the specific information on the route changes that you had suggested and also make sure we get the, uh, the, the shelter problem identified. Thank you very much. Ms. Yeah, Mercer. because the, the, the shelters need to be cleaned up and the Thank you very much. need to be changed. Uh, Mr. Carl Hasselbuttel? No, it's Eisenbuttel. Eisenbuttel. I, I never do that right. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Carl Heisenbuttel. I pretty much have been riding buses for about 10 years off and on. I represent the actual riders of the bus. I've been disadvantaged. I've had bus houses. I've had cars. Okay. The bus system hasn't changed in over 10 years. You've done three surveys, like I've said at previous board meetings, in 10 years. And you never took any of the public comments on the, off of those surveys. Um, I've even signed up and done the survey for the contractor that uh, Manpower, whoever you contracted out to. Uh, you still need to improve the bus service and the bus system for what you're charging people and also your budget. Because basically you have a bus system that's outdated and not efficient. You need to uh, create more buses to connect. You need to create better signage. You need to get, create better bus houses. Have them cleaned more often and checked. Uh, there are bus stops that are missing uh, numbers for the real time. And um, the buses need to connect better. They also need to have buses like the 18, the 52, the 19, and uh, maybe a couple other ones, one on Saturdays and Sundays more. Okay, nobody can catch a bus unless they either live or work on the beach, they're a tourist, or they go out, go to the bay, and back to the garage at night. And especially on a Saturday night, they can't get a bus. They can't work on a Saturday, they can't work on a Sunday, they can't even go to church most days. For, for certain buses that don't run the routes, they go to people's churches on Sunday. That's pretty much what I had to say. I can, okay, I'm signed up for the advisory committee to be on the advisory board, okay? I told you the last meeting that I can create an algebraic algorithm to make the buses connect better. Okay. It's algebra. You need to fix the times, like on the 18, when the 18 arrives to Park Street, I literally miss a bus by one minute, a 60 bus by one or two minutes or less. Mm -hmm. And the bus driver won't call because they're not allowed to call the bus because they're scheduled to get there at 10 after and the bus leaves at eight o'clock. Okay, the bus is already arriving, but the bus won't wait for them, and the bus driver won't call. Okay. Thank you very much. Would would you do the same thing that I ask uh, Miss Mercer and to talk to? Well, I'm going to church right now. Okay, well, so I got to catch a bus. But if you, you need to, if you could at least, excuse me, sir. Yes. If you could at least 
make sure that we get that connection information that, that your problem was at? Well, put me on the advisory committee and I'll fix it for you. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. The next person is uh, Mr. Rask. And Mr. Rask, uh, you're talking, I uh, understand you're talking about the uh, bus purchase, which is one of the consent items. So please yes. go ahead and share your, uh, your thoughts at this time. Th thank Good you. evening, sir. Good evening. Tom Rask, Unincorporated Seminole. Um, I learn a lot from coming to these meetings. And one thing I've thought about is do, do, uh, do others, do elected officials, think they have anything to learn from their constituents? I sure hope they do. Um, I don't agree with everything that I've heard so far, but I, I sympathize with the plight of those who, who have, you know, vital access cut. But we have to realize we have limited resources. And so if there are 100 things you want to do, you can rank them. And we can disagree which order they should be in. But when you apply your budget, maybe the bottom 25 will, will have to go. And that's just the way it's going to be. I feel right now that it, it's a little bit too reactive how the board acts, which brings me which brings me to the 10-day non-consecutive transportation disadvantage passes, which this board would not cut. There are only 80 people who have this. Just push them into a 31-day pass. I don't get it. Instead, money's being spent to do a survey of these people, and I'm going to make a public records request for those survey results. 80 riders use this pass. It stands out in statistics that 0.2% of the monthly passes. That's something you could get rid of. It would make uh, administration much easier. And this sort of reactive, and I'm not blaming anyone on the board, I'm just saying it's the end result of all 15 of you working here. Um, the bus purchase. I mean, this was voted out of committee. It lost in committee. In other words, the committee voted for buying these buses. And the minority then, represented by Mr. Barkley, advanced arguments for why you should wait. Well. This has real effects. Not only will your meetings in the future be longer, um, you can't, if, if these buses, the old buses start breaking down, there is no ready supply of city buses that you can just go lease. Now you're really going to impact people and their, their everyday life. These have real world consequences. And that, that's why I sent you an email that said, just vote. You know, the Nike swish would just do it. And I sent a little graphic that said, just vote. That's all I'm asking. Just vote on it. Vote on the, this Gillig bus purchase, up or down. If it's down, you can pick it up later, or you can look at electric buses, but vote. Please vote. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rask. Uh, the next person that uh, I have a card for is Mr. Rick Smith. And we have several uh, people uh, who have volunteered to give their time up. So you have 10 minutes. Good evening, Mr. Smith. Good evening, Chair and the um, rest of the board members, Mr. Miller, Mr. Zinnett, hi Julie. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Rick Smith and I'm the Chief of Staff for the Florida Public Services Union, SEIU. And I'd like to put your mind at ease tonight, uh, alleviate any fears or questions you may have about our appearance here. We're not bringing any surprises, taped conversations, no disgruntled employees, accusations, I don't think anybody's called Mike Deason, so we're going to be all right. Quite frankly, we're here as allies and partners in creating the best public transit system possible. One where residents have viable options, one where expanded services can be seen on the near horizon, and one which contributes to the social wealth and economies of our communities in Pinellas County. We at FPSU do have a different philosophy, if you will, on our relations to workers and the communities in which they live. We begin from the fact that workers are not just defined by their jobs. They're not merely just bus drivers or mechanics or customer service reps. They're also parents who worry about the quality of their schools and the future prospects of their children. <coughs> They're neighbors with interest in promoting the strength and vitality of their neighborhoods. They're churchgoers and baseball coaches and PTA members. They're like everyone else. They're like you, interested in peace and stability and fairness. With that realization that we're interconnected, so to speak, all of us, not just at PSTA, but in our communities, it also gives us a heavy responsibility. All these folks here, I commend you. You guys are great. And 
They're taking the responsibility to be the face of the authority to the public. The authority will be judged on our interactions with riders, by our interactions with those who are skeptical about the value of public transportation. And let's not kid ourselves, there are folks ready to pounce on anything to bash PSTA, not in the interest of making it better, but directly to demonize the spirit of public transit. We honor and gladly take the responsibility to be a voice of progress, civil discussion, and advocates for the authority, even if we disagree sometimes, and we will disagree from time to time. We've officially been representing non-supervisory workers for a month. Mr. Miller, Mr. Bradford, along with the entire management staff, have been very supportive in beginning a new relationship with the workforce and in building a new culture at PSDA, a new culture based on transparent actions, on consistent policies, and creating an atmosphere which facilitates worker engagement and participation and that respects the skills, experience, and knowledge base of employees on everything from scheduling to figuring out how to best assist our writers with challenges, the elderly, the disabled, the poor. In your presentation, and it was a good one, on the path forward, there's a triangle of action. You guys probably remember where the base holds up everything. And that base says focus on customer-oriented public services. We're behind that concept 100%. The elements are worth repeating. Continuous improvement of PSTA bus services for both riders and the community, engaging the broader community with ongoing communication and outreach, and building an inspired workforce that is empowered and accountable for ever improving customer service. We're down with that. Mr. Miller and his staff have made the beginning moves. We'll do our part in sharing the responsibility. I guess I would be remiss not to share with you some of our goals for the coming contract. I've touched on them somewhat, but it's worth going over again. One, more training, more training, more training. There's a real hunger for that. Two, an enhanced ability for employees to take the initiative to advance in their careers. Three, greater emphasis on safety, not just for workers, but for the public. Four, clarity and consistency in policies. And five, formal and institutional opportunities for employee engagement and input. It's a good list. Of course, then there's compensation. And I think the board has correctly perceived problems there. First is the problem with the bottom of the pay scale. A few facts for you. 21% of current employees make less than $12.50 per hour. The significance of that $12.50 is that that's the figure needed. You have to make that to get slightly over the poverty rate for a family of four. It's all set both for county employees and for City of St. Pete employees. Now that's 96 people. 44 of those 96 are very close to the 1250 figure. 19 make under $11 per hour. It's a little bit more of a stretch. We really need to fix this. No PSTA worker will feel inspired or empowered living on poverty wages. Then there's the top, the other half. It's actually way more than half. 64% of employees are at the maximum rate. That's 295 people. Because of economic circumstances, the top has barely moved for many years and haven't even kept up with low inflation, let alone stopping the free fall of employees out of the middle class. We have to start making gains to restore the sacrifices made for many years at PSTA. We can do this. We really can do this. And it's encouraging to see the board set aside for wages in the budget. It's going to allow us to begin to move the ball down the field on wage equality for PSTA employees. To get all this done, we'll take a collaborative effort. This is different than what has gone on here. That is identifying not just the problems, but shared beliefs and working to resolve those problems. It's going to also take time, time to craft an agreement that is based on your path, the board's path. We've got data to collect and an analysis to be done and agreement on a common vision to be hammered out. I do have an ask this evening, a small one. The 2016 budget begins tomorrow. That includes employee increases. 
a collaborative effort is going to be harmed if the issue of giving up retro pay to the beginning of the fiscal year is used as a bargaining technique to artificially speed up the negotiating process. We hope your intent was to honor employee increases beginning on October 1st. We need the time. So do you. Both of us do to get this agreement right for everyone. So thanks. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak. Hope to be speaking to you more. And I'm looking forward, as everyone in here is looking forward, to the best of relations and a partnership that moves our shared vision effectively throughout the authority and into the community. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Mr. <laughs> the uh, last card I have is Mr. Phil Compton speaking about the uh, bus uh, purchase postponement. Club, Florida, 1990 Central Avenue, St. Petersburg. Tough act to follow, Rick. I want to thank Brad Miller and the staff here for their work in obtaining and reviewing three proposals for electric bus manufacturers recently and for postponing, postponing your vote so that a full review in the next month can be performed by the staff and the board. You know, in a recent trip to the Alaskan Arctic, President Obama said, climate change is no longer some far off problem. It is happening here, it is happening now. He warned that unless more was done to reduce carbon pollution, we will condemn our children to a planet beyond their capacity to repair. Submerged countries, abandoned cities, fields no longer growing. His impatience was obvious. We're not moving fast enough. Each time I get a scientific report, I'm made aware that we have less time than we thought, that it's happening faster than we thought. Now, how do we tackle this challenge? The president says he has a philosophy that reducing demand is a more effective way to wean our economy off fossil fuels than shutting off supplies, which in a global market will just be provided elsewhere. And that's where you come in. You can choose to purchase new buses that will still burn fossil fuels until perhaps 2030, long after the time that we now know we can continue to do so. Or you can take a serious look at the new technology that reduces our demand, that eliminates all emissions from your buses. The new technology that also saves you money. You can act in a manner consistent with your sustainability policy. Or you can take a step backwards. Heed the advice of Pope Francis last week to the U.S. Congress on climate change. I am convinced we can make a challenge, make a difference. I'm sure. Now is the time for courageous actions and strategies. At Sierra Club, we understand the fiscal challenges you now face. We've been there with you for years, supporting the need for stronger support for your vital services. We have to now realize that the situation has changed dramatically. Electric buses that last year cost over $1 million each now cost hundreds of thousands of dollars less than they once did. These buses, no matter who makes them, all have one thing in common. They have the lowest total cost of ownership. Transit agencies are now buying these buses with their regular capital funds, finding it is no longer necessary to obtain a special grant to be able to afford them. They're also finding that their operating expenses are incredibly low, with fuel and maintenance being a fraction of what you used to pay. But don't take my word for it. Review the proposals that these three companies now have provided PSDA. Look at their routes, look at your routes, look at their bus capacity, match which ones would work best for you, and talk to the people up at Star Metro in Tallahassee who have been operating five electric buses for the last three years. Take the next step forward to protect our community and our future as you continue to serve it in a sustainable way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Compton. Is there uh, anyone else that uh, has not filled out a card but wishes to speak? All right, not seeing any. We'll close the public comment period for the meeting. The uh, first uh, the, or the next agenda item is a report from our non board committees, Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, Vice Chairman, do you have a uh, report do. for us? I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Thanks for all the great comments today. Uh, uh, the MPO board met on September 9th, and then they also met during a workshop on September 21st. Um, a, a lot of people on this board were there, but for those and those listening in, in the audience, um, we were very excited about how this workshop 
was put together and the dialogue that we had. The MPO board agreed in concept uh, to three high-level priorities for transportation improvements in the next two years. Those were US 19 corridor, the Gateway Employment Center, and transportation alternatives from Pen to and from Pinellas Beaches. Um, and public transit improvement planning will be incorporated in all three of these three priority issues. There was also a fourth that was mentioned as far as a goal of doing the complete streets. And while that might not be a fourth goal, it was, I think, the way we ended up the discussion is that should be included in these three goals was to make sure whatever is done there includes complete streets. Um, so that was a really good conversation. And then we also discussed uh, the STP funds. And, and that went on for a while. And there was some, some negative and some positive expressed. Uh, a couple of the, the negatives, I'll, I'll lead with the negative so I can end with the positive. A couple of the negatives expressed about the STP funds and, and our use or request of use of them was um, one person mentioned that you know we didn't raise our millage, so how can we be asking for money from MPO? Another person um, was curious as to why MPO should be supporting uh, capital bus replacements um, versus something that they felt we should be saving for as, as an operational type expense. Um, so on the positive side, and kind of where we left it, it's still middle of the road right now. Um, Brad and myself and several others um, urged the MPO board to uh, let's not get focused on STP funding, if it were. They have four or five different methods of funding. Let's, let's focus on what is the transit needed and how can MPO financially help us rather than getting into the weeds of how we use the funding and, and what it's going to get used on. And there was even further discussion about if these are our three goals, uh, US 19 corridor, Gateway Employment Center, and uh, transit from, from to and from the beaches because of tourism and jobs, then, then maybe the support comes for that added service to those things that might come in the future as an option. Um, Really, it's more about what we tried to say. It's really more about MPO being the transportation planning organization needs to be thinking about public transit in addition to paving America. That we need to be thinking about how we fit into there and we need to be partners. And there seem to be you know, some heads nodding at that concept. We will be having a second workshop or dialogue, and I believe it's December 4th, I think is what I saw today, um, it's coming. And, and I think that uh, Witt, the, the new chairman from MPO, is going to take all that dialogue, and I'm sure Brad's going to meet with him, and I know I plan to meet with him, uh, and I'm sure Bill does too, uh, to try to figure out how we can get some financial support from MPO, and maybe STP funds isn't it, maybe it's something else, but let's let's just have that partnership. So I feel kind of confident about where that conversation went. Um, and then, of course, we have a joint PSTA board and MPO board meeting uh, scheduled for January 21st in 2016. So please mark your calendars. Thank you. Any questions for uh, the vice chair? All right. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, Vice Mayor Patricia Johnson for a report on the uh, local coordinating board under the MPO. Thank you, Chairman. The MPO's local coordinating board met two weeks ago. I serve as the chair of the LCB as well as PSTA's official representative on the board. Commissioner Brian Scott also serves on this board. The LCB board received a good presentation from Career Source, which offers career planning, youth and specialty services such as the Ticket to Work program, an employment program for people with disabilities. They highlighted how critical transportation is to their clients to help them access jobs. We also received a presentation on PSTA's surveying of its customers, 
who choose to buy the 10-day transportation disadvantaged pass for $5. Ross Silver said the 10-day pass will continue to be offered until further notice. The LCB members helped Ross come up with a couple of follow-up survey questions of purchasers in November. I want to thank the PSTA Legislative Committee for supporting my request to add a priority to our state agenda to advocate for increased state transportation <coughs> disadvantaged funds when we go to Tallahassee. Um, and one of the things that, that uh, I, I know Ross is out there, I saw him. Ross, how many people do we transport, transport every day for LCB? Please, please come to the mic. Please, please come. <laughs> And identify yourself. For Hi, Ross Silver is a mobility manager. Um, it's a good question. Um, we're doing about 5,000, a little over 5,000 bus passes. So it's five, if one person for each of those. And then, of course, our agencies uh, are transporting. Is that daily? Well, it's 5,000 bus passes, so not everyone rides daily. So it's hard to get exact daily count. But you have you know, five, over 5,000 people a month on our buses thanks to the program, and then you have more people who are using the neighborly and park and, uh, and park vehicles to get around every day. Does that help? So, our, yeah. Well, <coughs> unless you thought of something, we needed to... I just, you know, the more that we work with this, yes, Ross and, and Brian and I, the more that we work with this, the more we realize that we're the part of Pinellas County that keeps it moving and going. There's a lot of cars out there, but we keep it moving and going in the directions that we so choose, such as employment, medical trips, all those things that, that are important in everyone's life. And to cut anyone off is, is pretty sad. We need to find out what they need before we cut them off. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any questions for the Vice Mayor on the LCB? All right. We'll move to the consent agenda. I would point out that uh, item 4F, there's a correction sheet at your, uh, at the, on the dais uh, to reword the action item to continue discussion of the Gilly bus replacement action item to the October 2015 board meeting. Are there any of the consent items that you would like to pull? I see Mr. Uh, Newton's hand. Yeah, 4, uh, 4B and 4C for discussion, please. 4B and C, any other items? Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to just pull 4F. I just want to make sure that uh, we're, everybody here is clear on what staff is going to be working on in the next okay. 30 days for additional information and why there's the need for that delay so that we're all clear and when we get next month is all the information that we need. So all right. Thank you. Is there any other item that is desired to be pulled? If not, is there a motion to approve consent agenda items A, D, and E? Motion approved. Second. I think I heard a motion and a second. Second, second by uh, Commissioner Barclay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Uh, we'll move to uh, consent agenda item 4B. Um, Mr. Miller, would you present that? Okay. Uh, certainly. I, I think Mr. Newton um, maybe had a comment on consent of Yeah, both of them together. Just, okay. I'm just curious as to... Um, I know we did a, a launch, but I haven't heard much since then. Okay. Uh, cost, participation, who's using it, you know. Yes. You get any of that stuff? So, uh, thank you for that. Um, members of the board, 4B is a extension of our AT&T service that um, provides the free Wi-Fi to customers on the PSTA bus, bus fleet. PSCA was the first system in Florida to offer free Wi-Fi on all of its buses, and we're very proud of that service. It's been a huge hit with our customers. We, from time to time, um, uh, I think as the customer noted, uh, we've, we sometimes have some issues with some of the modems 
on individual buses, but we're working through that. It's been very, it's been very popular, um, and we buy this off of a state contract. So we have a, a pretty a good deal with unlimited data from AT and T. Uh, the four C is a capital project that's in our your approved CIP. That is the upgrading of the relatively antiquated Wi-Fi service in this building, um, which maybe some of you from time to time maybe have trouble with <laughs> when accessing it. Um, uh, it's important for this building, of course, but what is more important is that more and more technology on the buses out in the parking lot over there where the buses are access, uh, download data from our fare boxes, from our cameras, from all sorts of things via Wi-Fi. And so this, this, this upgrade for $135,000, which was competitively uh, bid out, um, will accomplish that. So both uh, important sort of uh, infrastructure. I'm, um, I'm well aware of what the Wi-Fi does. It makes the, the, the bus uh, commute more productive. I mean, instead of sitting there for an hour each way, you can return emails or, tech or texts or whatever you may have. Um, but I wanted to, uh, for the public to know what we were doing. Um, a young lady stopped me, I think, at our last budget meeting out, out front when I was going to my car and was asking us, why, why wouldn't we get rid of Wi-Fi and try to keep routes? And I was trying to explain to her that it's uh, an amenity that uh, almost everybody utilizes. Almost everybody has a tablet or a smartphone or something that sucks up data. And they want to be able to, to be in communications with their officers or do some stuff while they're in a, in a commute, you know, to and from work. And it's been a it's been a valuable asset. It's well used and well received. Sure, some people complain about it not being up at certain times, but uh, we're working on that. You have to embrace the technology going forward to make you more uh, uh, if, uh, efficient, so you can do more with less. Because that's kind of where we're heading, but. It's a, it's a much needed amenity. It does work. The people are using it and it's appreciated. And I, I thank Brad for the wherewithal. We just have to keep up on the cutting edge of the technology so we make sure it always stays up and we always get five bars or more. So it'll be worthwhile using rather than sitting there with it spinning and you can never open your page. You can never get any internet access. I myself um, uh, was raised up on the bus, you know, mom with eight kids, five of us always company her to be grocery bag carriers because it was all you could carry on the bus and then after that when I went to school over to college over in Tampa we um, rode the bus uh, almost one way it was an hour and a half so it was an hour and a half of reading papers and looking out the window it wasn't a whole lot you can do but in today's age of uh, modern technology and being able to be in contact and make the, the commute more productive because if it's two hours an hour each way to get there and back that's two hours you never get back, so it's a, it's a much needed amenity, and I wanted to expand upon that, and this was an opportunity. So I thank you for the report, Brad. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Commissioner. I would I move it. Oh, good. Do I need to move them? Move approval. Uh, 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 we about, do need to uh, a motion on the uh, items. I would move approval of four A and C. Second. Four B. Four. I think it's four B and C. I'm sorry. I'm saying A. Four B and C. I got them checked and I'm reading. A and. Commissioner Welch, you're seconding B and C. Commissioner Barkley, did you have a comment? Uh, yes, I just wanted to make it clear that uh, we in the Finance Committee uh, evaluated thoroughly the different uh, bids on this program and selected uh, the one that's being forwarded at this time. And uh, I'd encourage everyone to uh, vote yes on this motion. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments on these two agenda items? Not seeing any hands, we'll move to a vote. All in favor of uh, agenda items 4B and C signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those pass unanimously. The uh, next consent agenda item is 4F. Uh, Commissioner Eggers, uh, do you want to? Uh, well, ask your yeah, question yeah, just, or yeah, whether it's been in the finance committee or, or even in discussion with Brad I just want it to be clear that um, when we make this decision next month that we have the, uh, some real good evidence of, of the pluses and minuses of each technology 
short-term, long-term benefits, costs, etc. And also some items that perhaps we ought to also include for, for discussion uh, are trade-offs for me on either service cuts or additional funding for TD as, as something to consider as we look at the bus purchase plan next month. So I don't think it's always as crystal clear and just between two things. Sometimes there's a, a few things that we trade off when we make decisions and I'd just like to make sure I'm, I'm clear in the staffing and then therefore in discussion uh, which direction that I want to go in October. So I don't know if anybody else had any thoughts on that, but I just want to make sure everybody weighed in on what they're expecting. Commissioner Gerard, do well, you I would agree with that. And just to be specific, I was looking for information about the purchase cost, but also the operating costs over a number of years, or the, the life of the equipment, whatever we're looking at. Thanks for that clarification. I agree with that. Other, uh, Mr. Miller, did you want to res respond? Or well, yes. Uh, and as um, Commissioner Eggers and we and the members of the Finance Committee, you know, we had. We had a good discussion at the Finance Committee this past month where we started to lay out the, the sort of uh, different benefits and costs and included some uh, analysis that we had completed on life cycle cost, which included the operating costs as well as the upfront cost of uh, diesel buses, clean uh, diesel buses that are 2016 buses rather than the buses that we're replacing. Um, CNG buses, e um, wholly electric uh, buses that run off, off a battery, and then hybrid, hybrid electric buses. Uh, the committee had a, had a good discussion about it. Um, asked for a little more information. I think comparing CNG, the CNG option, some more detail on that, and then maybe some um, the kind of discussion that Commissioner Eggers has suggested on the trade-offs and sort of the, the long-term financial impacts of the, of the different decisions. Um, when, if you uh, approve continuing a, another month, we'll have another discussion uh, at the Finance Committee and make a, make a recommendation back to the Board. Next month, we're trying to organize the agenda, so this, this would be the main topic for the uh, Board um, in October. Uh, I believe that uh, probably what the recommendation may be is to have additional um, analysis done on a, on a long-term program for PSDA and that you consider sort of separating <coughs> the, the replacement purchase that we want to make now um, with whatever information we're able to get to you by next month. So we go ahead and get some buses ordered, but then still have this uh, maybe even a longer discussion and a policy setting uh, process beyond that. Uh, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I, I, Brad, I think kind of alluded to the question I was going to ask was, do you feel like in a month you could come up with a comprehensive analysis, and I think you just answered the question that you, you may need some more time, and I would think if we were going to, I mean, I think you can come up with some of the, the quick answers as Commissioner Eggers and Commissioner Gerard mentioned, I mean, some of those things I think you can kind of whip up, but it seems like we should have a, a little bit of a longer term analysis on what might work because it's not just about the technology. It may end up being several types of technologies depending on the route or the size of the vehicle or what the vehicle comes in. And, and depending on where we're going and who we're serving. I mean, just there's, there's different aspects, and I know that's not something we can answer in a month, and we would want to have some of that flexibility because maybe an electric bus works for one route and doesn't another, but then a hybrid works for something else, and maybe CNG is something we want to work for, you know, by five years from now we want to be there. Who knows? But I certainly would want to allow you the time to do what you need to do Brad, and I, I do like your idea of at least trying to get a decision for this budget year so that we can allow you the time to do a comprehensive plan. Thank you. Is there any other, um, <coughs> Commissioner Long? Uh, yes, and I, I just um, feel compelled listening to this conversation to remind everyone that we did make a commitment when we were working on this path forward, that this would be a living, moving document 
that wasn't cast in stone and that we need to be able to make decisions as we move forward in the time frame we're making them while at the same time leaving ourselves open to change our, change our minds depending on what the new technologies might be because the world is moving so fast and technology is improving so quickly. So I wouldn't want to see us get locked into you know, something that was absolutely finite where we didn't have the flexibility to react to the most current opportunities. Totally agree. Just a reminder. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Beavis. Just real quick, and I agree with all the comments made, and I think we have a, which is why it was postponed, we have an immediate need that we need to address, um, and we want to do that with the best available information, but as Commissioner Eggers and others have indicated, that we have a longer range issue that we need to look at, and as we indicated at the last meeting, or when we postponed this, um, you know, we do this every August, and I think that's ample time for us to project forward, at least for the immediate uh, need, and as Commissioner Long indicated, this is a, uh, a fluid program, and, and as technology change, we want to adapt, but I think it's really about the long-range plan overall, so thank you. Commissioner Rice? Um, I would also like to add on to Commissioner Long's comments that um, uh, one thing that may be helpful to think about is you know, before we get kind of too locked down into looking at specific technologies, if we also consider what the, uh, you know, corporate average fuel economy of PSTA's fleet is. I mean, that's the federal legislation that helps guide the fuel economy of American cars and trucks and buses. You know, if we had a sense of what was a, our goal as an agency to head towards, then we would feel a flexibility in what types of technology, take our pick, of what it would take to get there. Perfect. And it would also take into account other types of strategies, uh, trip reduction strategies, for instance, mm -hmm. um, employees who might carpool to wor work. All of that kind of goes into what counts towards PSTA doing its part for the environment. All right. I don't see any other hands up. Am I missing anybody? Uh, is there a motion relative to uh, agenda item 4F? So I'm a second. All right. Uh, quick, Chair, I just want to make sure that yes. so the motion is to really address the to 2016 bus purchase program. Is that, is that what we're going to be doing in the end of October? We're not talking about long term. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, uh, I just want to make sure that's. Is that. Uh, what the maker of the motion is, and the seconder. 2016 cap, capital purchase, right? It's about the, the bus replacement for... I'm sure there'll be some dialogue, but yeah, that's good. No, I mean, but the decision... Yes, correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the motion is to continue discussion of the bus replacement action item, the immediate uh, bus replacement purchase. Correct. To, All right. To the October meeting. To the October 2015 meeting. Correct. All right. Uh, Mr. Rask, I have a, a second card from you. You did address this in the general comments. Very good. I, I will give you a little flexibility. Thank you. If you can be brief, sir. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I didn't use my three minutes last time. Um, thank you to Commissioner Eggers for pulling this item. It's an important discussion to have. I think what staff will tell you is that these buses have a 150 mile range that you need to buy at least five buses to get federal money and PSDA doesn't have uh, uh, routes where it makes sense to buy even five buses. That's the bottom line. The routes are longer. It might make sense for the downtown St. Pete circulator. That's it. That's why these buses don't make any sense. And Commissioner Bajalski mentioned uh, CNG. CNG is a fossil fuel. Just because it's called natural gas doesn't mean it's not a fossil fuel. Uh, Mr. Compton of the Sierra Club spoke about the need to reduce fossil fuels, so presumably he would be opposed to CNG buses. Also, these electric buses, as I mentioned last month, two-thirds of the electricity in Florida is generated from coal or natural gas. Both are fossil fuels. <coughs> Several emails have come into uh, PSTA uh, saying that uh, these buses, the electric buses, are zero emission. They're not. They're zero tailpipe emission. So again, if you get down to reality 
of what this does. What if you don't buy these buses? What if the old buses start breaking down? You could be creating a nightmare for yourself. So that's why I again say, just vote. Thank you. All right, the, the motion is to continue the discussion to the October 15 meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Now we will move into the action items. The uh, first action item is the CEO 2015 evaluation. The way this board is organized, the board chair is also the chair of the personnel and the executive committees. So let me recognize myself to introduce this agenda item. Annually, we are required to review and provide an evaluation for our single employee, our chief executive officer. For the benefit of the public, let me take a minute to review the process that we are using. The CEO provides a, an updated status on the annual objectives that were established last year, and this is, uh, update is, is provided to the board. All the board members then complete a standard evaluation form that was developed and approved by the personnel committee. Once those forms are uh, returned, the CEO takes the results of those forms and this year met individually with each board member. The personnel committee then met on August 13th to review the evaluations and receive a report from the CEO on performance issues. The personnel committee then looked at three possible scenarios and uh, by vote of the committee developed a recommendation to the executive committee and to the board. That evaluation is attached to the back of the agenda item. The executive committee then reviewed and voted to recommend a slight modification to the recommendation that was made by the personnel committee. And that modification is also shown on page two of the agenda item. Also attached to the agenda in your agenda package is a summary of the performance rankings, the detailed comments from all of the board members, a summary of the CEO's meetings with the individual board members. And for this evening, I'm suggested the process for this agenda item be as follows. A motion and a second, public comment, if any, board discussion, and then board action. Normally, the committee chair moves the committee's recommendation, but since I am not allowed by our rules to make a motion, I would ask for a motion from a member of the personnel or the executive team. So move. Second. And is the motion to accept the wording as proposed and amended by the executive committee? Did you see that? Page 29. It's 29 page, page 29 in the agenda. I guess it's actually on page 30. Well, let me just make sure I have a, sure. the motion first. What, what, what is the motion I'm trying to understand? Well, I'm this option, option B. Option B. Page, page, page 30. 30. There's a oh. recommended action for the board to consider. I'm just looking this over because I was in the meeting and I guess maybe some changes got added by the exec board. I don't know about. I think that's what happened. The executive committee added the words beginning on the fourth line that says inclusive to CEO's August 2015 yeah. performance evaluation response. Those were the only changes proposed by the executive committee. So what, what are we making a motion at this time for? This would be to adopt this statement as the response to this action item. So you're wanting a motion on action before we have discussion? I'm just, just to get it on the table. The maker's fine with the amendments. Or, well, as amended. So we have the, and the second? 
Jordan. Second, okay. So we now have a motion and a second uh, to accept the uh, recommended wording from the personnel and executive committee. I have one card from members of the public and that is uh, Mr. Rask. You are recognized. Thank you. Um, in thinking about how to vote, you're, you're dealing with a person's future. I don't take that lightly. Um, you should think about who's saying what and for what reasons. And I want to read from you, for you from the minutes of the Personnel Committee meeting, June 24th, where Ms. Long talked, and I'm quoting, talked about the need for the board support of Mr. Miller in moving the agency forward after Greenlight. She noted, and the committee agreed, that a favorable evaluation would serve that purpose, end quote. A favorable evaluation would serve that purpose. And then Ms. Long proceeded to give Mr. Miller the lowest rating of any board member. This after she had consistently given him 4.7 in the 4.7 range the last two years. In fact, her rating is even lower than that of Mr. Roach two years ago. And who had by far the lowest rating then. I think, how do, you, how do you respectfully say that someone's being manipulative? I don't see how you can have one opinion of the CEO for two years running and then from June 24th until the evaluations were handed in to have a different, completely different opinion while encouraging you to give a favorable opinion. Um, it's not easy to, as I said, I don't take this lightly. I don't have an opinion, but I also here I think you should vote. You should vote on this motion. If it fails, proceed to vote on whether to keep Mr. Miller. I look at the sheet and I see that 2013 and 2014 um, he received in the 4.4 range and now it's dropped to 3.34 and there are nine of you who have given him a rating below three there's been some discussion what does the three mean but there seems to be a lot of people unhappy here so please vote on this motion and if it fails then vote on whether to keep Mr. Miller or not need to move forward there are a lot of decisions to make and I will leave this um, with Ms. Garofalo so you can read if you're interested you can pull it up on your computer and see these minutes and these comments yourself. Please vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rask. Um, members of the board that would like to make a comment. Mr. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to be sure that it's option B, page 30, correct? Is it, I don't see an option A, so I just want to make sure that's... That's the committee's recommendation, yes. Okay. All right. Good. And. Um, you know, I just want to say that I you know, recognize this is probably a pretty tough evaluation for Brad, but I, I think that this is a good. Um, I think that this is a good way to move forward, and um, and, and I'll support it. So, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Welch, did you have? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if there's an English major in here, maybe they can help me. But I thought in the executive committee the wording was in the red part inclusive of the CEO's August 2015 evaluation response, not inclusive to. So I to you. that would be a, just a minor change, inclusive of the CEO. Well, I got black and white. Is there any objection to that correction? To no the objection. Okay. And aside from that, I support the motion as well. Um, we all have recognized what this organization has gone through the last year or so. Uh, and I think the wording addresses that. It talks about the need for improved communication and accountability. And that portion in red holds Brad accountable for everything that he responded to and everything that he said he would do in reaction to this board's evaluation. And so I support that. This is for six months, correct? Yeah. Uh, and then it would come back again. And so um, all had the opportunity to talk to Brad. I, I certainly had a couple of issues, especially the Friday updates, which I think are crucial and very, very important for us to continue to have that. Um, and when the board sets a policy, it's not up to Brad's discretion whether to continue that or not. And uh, he has um, acknowledged that. And, you know, we've set a path forward here that I think we all can be proud of. Uh, we're in a good direction, uh, and I support uh, this direction going forward. Okay, I, uh, Commissioner Newton. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. 
And, and, and that was uh, perfectly put, uh, Commissioner Welch. That's what I was just going to hold up, give a pass forward. It's unfortunate that we talk about moving forward, and um, all people want to talk about is the past. I don't know how you're going to let go of one before you get to the other. All of the stuff that um, I think people are really critical of um, our CEO about happened, and a lot of it has been addressed, and it's been in the media over and over and over. You can't even get a good spin on the story of the same old story. But if we're going to move forward post green light, then we have to just do just that. Um, just because we uh, uh, didn't, or, or the, the voters didn't um, want to be taxed to provide transportation options and additional transportation does not mean there's still not a need for transportation. And what I'm really uh, infumed about, if, if anything, is that a lot of the people during that campaign, which they won, and I called them all up personally that night to graduate them. That's what I did, because it was a campaign. And that's what you do when you lose a campaign. You call the, the, one, the, uh, the one that prevailed, and you give them their congratulatory, and you move on, because it's done. However, during that time, there was a lot of misnomers about how people was going to be affected. A lot of minorities and people that depend on this service, if that uh, measure had passed. But to see some of those same people who come in here and ask us why we just don't take out an axe and just cut everything, just blatantly just to, to uh, reach some, some goal, I think is totally irresponsible. You know, uh, I, I commend my CEO. I serve on a lot of boards, and a lot of them got CEOs or, 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 or executive uh, um, um, directors. directors or presidents and all that, but I can tell you in my eight years on, on council, I've never seen any CEO out as mostly vocal and visible as this man. And that's my personal opinion. And my ratings speak to that because I think the job requires more than just him having a title. You have to go out there and be about the job, and he was. And that's what I grade him on. Now, what has happened has happened. I think also in that grading period, if you look at the last one, there was no compensation recommendation at all. And that was his recommendation. He wasn't trying to get anything out of that green light. He said he didn't, didn't want anything. And the board approved that. And as we go forward, I think some of the same thing is happening. But we also have a new directive after that went away. We're not still trying to go out and get uh, green light and real money and get people to vote for taxes. That's not what we're doing. We're looking at doing the best with what we have and moving forward. That's why we have a path forward. We've had the workshops. We're having a lot of discussion. We've invited everybody to the table. We're very open to the public. We meet at night so everybody can come and have their input. And that's all we can do. But if you want to live in the past, you're going to be there by yourself. Because I've got to look out for the people coming forward to provide transportation options to the most neediest people in my district and throughout this county. That's my job, and that's the cross I have to bear. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Long, I think you were the next one I saw. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak to comments that I made on the personnel committee uh, that were, that Mr. Rass made reference to. Thank you, Mr. Rass, for pointing them out. I do want to share with everyone, though, that those comments were taken out of context of a very in-depth and comprehensive discussion about three recommendations that were on the page that we were looking at. And so that you all know, this evaluation was made on a five-point bell curve with no specific direction about what the numbers one through five meant. And so when you look at this evaluation and the fact that we have a 15-member board here with very uh, different people with very varied backgrounds on this board, it becomes very clear that not everyone on the board understood how a bell curve works, number one. Not everyone um, understands or has a feeling for what does success for PSTA look like. And I make those comments based on the enormous discrepancy in the numbers. The, you can argue with what anyone says, but 
the numbers speak from the, themselves and they're all over the board and so um, to me that says that the evaluation itself was extremely flawed that it was based on an old format before Greenlight. Well, I think we all can admit that an awful lot of things have changed since Greenlight came and went. And as Commissioner Newton said, we as board members now have to be all about the future. And I know uh, from the experiences I've had in my life that there are right ways and wrong ways to address everything. I am not going to speak for everyone on this board, but I know all these people pretty personally, and I'd like to think we all take this job really, really seriously. PSTA is a very large, very complicated agency with a lot of moving parts and a lot of employees. For the first two years, my evaluation was based on knowledge that I gained as I was learning, now I'm in my third year of sitting on this board and because of the committees that I've been assigned to, I have really immersed myself in the inner workings of this agency. Hence, I have a much greater understanding today, Mr. Rask, than I did in year one and year two. And therefore, it gives me a whole different perspective from which to evaluate. I like to be fair to people and I think that when you change your criteria, you change your goals and objectives, you have to give the person that you're working with an opportunity to stand up, raise the standard and move forward and that's what I'm all about. That's why my evaluation was the way it is. I have no problem discussing it in public. I've had a very in-depth one-on-one -on -one many of them as a matter of fact with Mr. Miller. He knows exactly where I stand. He has been given by this board a brand new list of goals and objectives to accomplish and only by redoing this evaluation can we truly hold him accountable with the new objectives that we have. Okay, I'm done, but I just felt like I needed to respond to that because it's critical to our agency and it's critical to this man's career. Second. All Thank right. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Long. You're welcome. Uh, Council Member Rice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that's hard to follow. Well. <laughs> um, uh, that's true. I, um, I, I'm glad to follow it because I, I just wanted to comment on a couple of things. I wanted to pick up on what was just said about some of the, the flaws in the evaluation. And um, it's notable to me that Commissioner Long brought up the, um, the drawbacks of how the evaluation was set up because she did, you know, I think out of all the commissioners, I think you gave uh, Mr. Miller the lowest score. Um, I did. I was among the group of people giving a high score. Um, so it kind of calls into question of this, of what the numerical rating meant, a lack of consistency, but also how the numerical rating was weighed versus a narrative. Because I spent um, uh, a lot of ink writing <laughs> my comments that I hoped that I hope that the narrative of what I wrote in that analysis was weighed more than, you know, an arbitrary number. Um, so, you know, d depending on how other people feel or their comfort level about the um, consistency of the evaluation and the numbers, I'll just say that I have, you know, a little bit of heartache about this. I know I seconded it, but um, I do have a little bit of heartache maybe about the March 31st, six month time period. And I, I, I just personally feel like we're, we're, what kind of message are we sending to our partners and people in the community? And it, I kind of feel like we're trying to drive with one foot on the gra gas and one foot on the brake. And that by holding a six month evaluation over Brad's head, maybe isn't the most useful way to go forward, but I'm, I'm interested in hearing what, what other commissioners may, may think about that. And specifically, I'd say that we would have it 
you know, do away with the six months and just come back in a year. I think I saw Commissioner Eggers. <coughs> well, um, first of all, I, I really appreciate uh, the process that we've all had to go through. I mean, I, if you've been in public office, these are not, these are not easy things to do. You, um, and since there is some contention, at least in, in the evaluations there, they're difficult sometimes. And I really want to thank my fellow commissioners up here for the efforts that they've had to do. And, also for Brad to just to, to have to you know to sit through the one on ones, the fifteen of us maybe a couple three times. <laughs> um, for me, you know, I kind of knew the board, so you know, Commissioner Long made a comment that three years her first year versus her third year is quite different and uh, maybe in year two or three if I if I'm on the board I'll think, you know, in a different way than I do today. And I, I bring more of a like from the outside perspective. I mean I wasn't part of this board last year and uh, quite frankly uh, as we are reviewing Brad I think it is okay to talk about the past I certainly didn't like the, uh, the efforts that were made last year I didn't like a lot of the issues that were raised in public last year and uh, but it all drives towards leadership and confidence in Brad for as a PSTA leader um, uh, our, our CEO and I, that's where I have, a, I have some real questions I would agree that I think the six month thing needs to go away. I think we either have that confidence in, in Brad to uh, extend that to next year this time, and certainly any time during the year things happen that are you know, that bother us, things can change on a dime, but I think we either have to have that, that, that vote of confidence in moving forward um, or, 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 or seek to make a change at this time. And I, for me, it's about leadership. I think there's a lot of questions in the, in the public about leadership at PSTA. I think there's questions on this board, certainly in looking at the comments made on the evaluation. Um, I don't really know about staff and their confidence in, 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 the, in the management team, but I think there's enough questions about the confidence and, and about the leadership at this time that I certainly think that we ought to perhaps slow down just a little bit and and maybe even think about making a change. Um, this is not easy, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I really, really wrestled with this. But we either have to make the change now, or, or at, the, at the end of the day, we have to. I don't. I, I think the analogy of putting the gas and the brake at the same time is absolutely valid. And I think we each need to do some soul searching here to see if you really do have that confidence in this, in our CEO, uh, Mr. Miller. Then let's let's do that year. If not, then let's 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 address it today. I think six months. It'll be we'll be at Christmas time before you know it. January will be around the corner. You'll have three months to go, and you know you know what happens during the holiday season. So I'm just saying that we as as a board in our collective individual thoughts and, and feelings about this, I think that's really the decision. If you have the confidence in, in, in Mr. Miller and. Uh, uh, then let's then let's then let's move forward with it and and move forward with the, the normal evaluation next year. Um, I do have reservations, however, in moving forward, and I just want to make sure that I got that out. Um, Brad, I really can't tell you how much I appreciate the time that we had talking about these issues. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Vitas, um, <coughs> thank you, Chairman. I as well have concerns about the option. I think we were you know, given the responsibility to evaluate um, Brad, and we did that based on the criteria that we were given. Um, and then, uh, and, and I agree that I think either the March thing, the March thing is, is, is kind of a waste, really, because by the time staff comes up with the criteria, the evaluation criteria, we're going to be another three months into this and going to have a really a short time to, to do that. And we in my opinion, we evaluated the position as we have in the past based on the criteria and the questions that we were given and we scored it accordingly and it seems a little um, crazy at this point either we do it based on that or we don't but we don't just say well let's you know let's change the rules and evaluate a different way for six months um, that's kind of the heartburn I have we, you know I don't know if it was because we didn't like the results that came out of it um, as was indicated nine of the uh, board members voted below three and you can make three whatever you want to do and I, I have comments on that too I think it should be expanded and a little broader I saw a lot like I did with 2.5s and I don't think it was clear you know the scoring process but 
nevertheless, that's what's been in place for a long time, but I don't like to see that we evaluated them based on the criteria that we were given and the year in, you know, in the past, and it's not just the green light thing. Um, the green light thing failed almost a year ago, and, uh, you know, there were other issues that came up, and Commissioner Eggers indicated, and I indicated in my comments a lot, that the question is about confidence, and it's confidence in the board, um, it's confidence in staff, it's confidence in the leadership, and that doesn't just come from me as a board member, it comes from the taxpayers, uh, the riders, uh, all the way up to Tallahassee, and the feeling that I get, and I'm fairly new to this as well, is that I question if the confidence is there with the PSTA, and I think that we heard one of the issues through Greenlight was that why should we give you more money? You guys can't manage the money that you have. So that's a lack of confidence to me. Whether it's correct or not, perception is reality. We all know that. And so I'm, you know, I again have reservations on making an option B that, you know, we somewhat change the criteria. I'm not necessarily opposed to changing the criteria, um, but I think we need to act on the criteria that we were given now. And if we decide down the road to change the criteria for the following year, then we do so. But um, I have a, a little bit of a reservation about changing it at this time. Thank you. Commissioner Guyton? Yeah. Um, oh, for, for the last five years, I've been on the planning board and the finance and performance management committee. Uh, and this is where we figure out what we want to do and how we're going to do it and pay for it. And basically what we do is we talk about the future. But mostly what we do is, is we listen to Brad and the executives about how we will get there and the presentation and the elevation of the PSTA. You can check the records of our agreements uh, to forward materials. The board of directors is almost always totally unanimous. We don't have any... We don't have any problems with what the, the staff or what Brad was. Um, most recently we endorsed a completely new fair plan from Chief Development Officer Cassandra Borchers. Uh, we endorsed a new plan for simplifying and economizing maintenance purchases from the Director of Maintenance, Henry Lukasik. My own town is facing a 10% increase in health fares and our Director of Human Resources Larry Long and Dr. showed us how a 10% increase in PSDA's health insurance was reduced to 3.5%. Our union representatives recently changed, but because of our chief operating officer, James Bradford, our relations with our workers remain calm, and most recently, our chief financial officer, Deborah Elias, instituted a program to save us over a million dollars on our fuel costs. All of these people, with the exception of Larry Longenecker, were hired by Brad. That's who hired him. And there's been total agreement with Brad and the staff on where we're going and how to pay for it. We have an energized staff, a balanced budget for five years, and a good union relationship. Let's talk about green light for a second. As, as was mentioned, I think for eight months or ten months, Brad and the staff went out and talked to all the people in Pinellas County. I forgot what the what the total number was. It was around eighty thousand or something. Uh, a lot, a lot of people got hit on and talked to. And if you recall back then, um, our our staff at our attorney put together a whole. Um, section about what exactly we could say about advocating or not advocating. The whole thing was very tough to make work, but all of that stuff was done. And what happened was finally after the our disastrous vote, we had a couple of meetings and we set our agenda and we set a budget. But the one thing I missed in all of those meetings was the fact that we had some very energetic people who went out and raised a lot of money for us. We had over a million dollars to spend on making green light work. And this was not a, a, a money that Brad could get his hands on or could direct. Um, uh, Mayor Bajowski, remember one time we were sitting in a, a, a meeting and you said, I got one notice. And I got it because I'm a Democrat. 
And I said, I got four. And you said, you're a Republican. The way that was done, that kind of a, a method, is not the sort of thing that Brad would do. I mean, that's not the way we run stuff. So the, the point is, these people were good at raising the money, but all of a sudden, they couldn't actually implement it. Their, their chief of staff got pulled away, they had new people, they went back and forth. But the whole thing of making Greenlight work really fell because our, our, these communication people lost their focus. We had a million dollars and our opposition <coughs> had about $150,000 and they used that for signs and they used that for a telephone campaign. And it worked very, very well. But a million dollars should have won this for us. My, bet, pre, my, my point is here that Brad did just about everything he legally could, but we lost because we just lost focus. So here we are now. We have got an energetic, enthusiastic staff that is contributing to us. We have got a, uh, a board that has got a plan. We've got for five years, we've got five years of, of um, budgets that are there, and we've got a good, comfortable union. We are directors of this. We're not co-conspirators, uh, collaborators. We don't, we don't do things. All of the, the, this consideration about how the, uh, the things were put together, they're fine. But when you try and get in and, and try and define the small purposes or small parts of what, what Brad does, it's practically effrontery. Um, so I'm thinking here we have a, a, a situation where Brad has really done a terrific job um, based on a, a, a nasty setback with the, uh, the, uh, with the uh, vote that we had, and, and I totally support the man. Thank you. Commissioner Hall. Thank you. Uh, boy, <clears throat> too many subjects to get into at one time. Uh, if, if this were corporate America and a corporation had asked their CEO to go out and perform uh, the number one promotional campaign in the history of the company and it came back as a complete failure, the next day the CEO would have been terminated. That's how corporate America works. PSTA obviously is not corporate America. If you look at the tabulations though, going along with that, you have an av it's a it's a C plus average. Which, you know, I was a C plus student for short, I was a dumb kid. But anyway, C plus ordinarily corporate America CEO, that does not cut it either. There were several other comments that were made here. Uh, one of them was about the disastrous vote. I wouldn't call it a disastrous vote. That was the public speaking. <coughs> you know, the promotion for Greenlight, and you have to look at history here. You cannot ignore it. You know, as they say, those who don't look at history are doomed to repeat it. But the public is the one who said no. Although the opposition was, I think they were actually outspent 12 to 1. Uh, they didn't. They didn't have this stellar campaign going. Actually, I thought it was kind of a uh, amateurish campaign versus you know the the uh, uh, the campaign that was being done for Greenlight. But even when you look at the money that was raised from it, I looked at the finance reports. Most of that was special interest money. This this was not mom and pop putting five and ten dollars into the pot to oppose it. You had the, you had construction people there and developers and everybody else, they put this money up on the thing. That's where the report I said. But th that's neither here nor there. That's history. That's water over the dam. But if it were me and I was on the board of directors of a regular for-profit company and our CEO came back after we just, we had basically bet the farm on getting this thing done and it was not done and he got a C plus average on the thing, he would have been terminated the next day. But as I said, this is not corporate America. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Newton. Um, I just want to 
straighten some out for the record. Uh, that million dollars was raised by the chamber. PST had no control over that money, nor any of the marketing, just for the record. So, so you guys won't think Brad had a million dollars to try to get this through, because I don't think he did unless he didn't tell me about it. So just for the record. Commissioner uh, Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I, th I think our committees really do some pretty darn good work. And we've got a recommendation here from both our personnel committee and our executive committee who took all of the information that we provided and developed this, this recommendation. And contained within it, it says that we recognize he, meaning Brad, has made a number of positive recent improvements, but further progress is needed. To me, that kind of says it all why we're, we're, we're looking at a six month. So, um, you know, I do believe that the, the personnel and the executive committees, they're, I respect everybody on there, they're smart folks, and I think they developed a very good recommendation of, of, of a way to move the agency forward, and I support it. I'm looking for other hands. Uh, Commissioner Gerard? Yeah, I, uh, I feel like I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know it's been almost a year, but uh, it <laughs> takes a while to learn about things on this board. It does. Um, and I have to say, this is the biggest board that I serve on, have ever served on. Trying to keep 15 people happy is not <laughs> easy for anybody. And I, I told Brad I didn't have his job for anything, but, um, you know, we've been through a lot in the last year. Uh, but I've been very pleased with Brad's efforts to increase communication, to keep us informed, to um, let us know when there's fires brewing. Um, and I have to say, I didn't realize that um, the employee things that were coming up were deliberately played out in front of us uh, by the other union. And that, that's you know, because I had a problem with that. I don't think I don't think any of that should come to us in the first place. We're not your employer's bread is. Um, and so that helps me put some things in perspective. Um, I have again, I have been pleased uh, with the increased communication, um, and I think we have a positive direction that we're moving in. Um, but I'm not so sure I'd scrap the six months. I think I'd keep it and see what happens. I understand that, you know, we've talked about communication before I got here and it got better for a while and then it didn't. So let's see if it stays better, Brad. Thank uh, you, Mr. Barkley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was one of the ones who uh, gave Brad one of the higher evaluations and there's a good reason for that because he's done a very good job under very adverse circumstances any public entity is constantly involved in budgetary issues uh, we had a lot of issues with regard to the green light campaign Brad worked very diligently <coughs> on several occasions um, we had the experience of being out in the field knocking on doors. Commissioner Dighton and myself were out knocking on doors uh, in North Clearwater and talked with a number of people. Brad was out there in the middle of that in the trenches, not as a leader, but as a person who was interested in moving PSTA forward. I feel very strongly that we have landed on our feet with regard to the path forward. Let's give that a chance to work. Let's give a chance to work with the new union members. Let's give an opportunity to see how the route changes benefit us. Let's give a chance to see how the new funding campaign works with regard to fares, etc. And then let's take another look. But I can tell you right now that there are not 10 or 20 or even 5 people 
right now <laughs> champing at the bit anywhere in the country to take over running an agency like this. So if everybody who is against Brad thinks that we're going to find somebody tomorrow to run this operation, they're totally wrong. And we need to continue to move forward. We need to continue to make sure that we provide the best service that we can given the financial difficulties we face. And we need to make sure that we are doing the best thing for Pinellas County and the region. And that does not mean changing horses in midstream. It does not mean simply throwing away all that's been done in the past and starting all over. It means working hard to develop results from what we have already planned and evaluated and see what happens. So I would be very much against any kind of a change at this point. I was not particularly for the six-month evaluation process, but I agreed with it. But I certainly do not think that this is something where we simply stop everything that's been done over the past years and start all over again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Welch, did you have something else? No, I already spoke. Um, Commissioner Diamond? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I want to thank the personnel and the executive committees for their work in putting this together, and I do support the motion as seconded by um, my colleague, Commissioner Rice. Um, just a couple comments. I think that um, I, I, I think that the there are a number of issues here, obviously, that we're all trying to evaluate. Um, I, I have no problem with the idea of us going through another exercise again in six months. I've been involved in um, evaluations now in the context of having worked in state government and evaluating employees in state government. And I've also been involved in evaluations in the private sector where I currently am. And the reality is you are always constantly evaluating your employees' performance. And, um, and I think for us to go through that exercise on a more regular basis is a good thing. And I don't think it should be interpreted as um, anything other than um, being consistent with other, other things we've been doing as a board, which is to be looking for increased communication and increased accountability and increased transparency on a whole host of issues, not, not just the one issue of evaluating our top employees. So I don't have any um, real heartburn about that, and I think the, um, the wording that the committees put forward is, is uh, in the motion is done in a prudent way. Um, and I think looking at the possibility of how to make the evaluation a more effective tool is probably a good exercise. The reality with this, I, I agree with a lot of the comments that people across the spectrum here have made. I remember when I um, first had the obligation to evaluate people, uh, attorneys in state government. We had 80 attorneys in the agency where I worked. I, I looked at it for the very first time. It was a one to five rating, and I thought that the fives were the real superstars. The threes were the people that um, were dependable, um, were doing a very good job for the agency, and, and you know, in my mind, a three was a, a very strong rating. So the, the point is everybody looks at the numbers differently, and I agree with many of my colleagues' comments that, that what it really comes down to is do we have confidence in how things are going. And unfortunately, in my opinion right now, we live in a time when there is a lot of um, distrust of government at every level and I can say as a new person who's still just learning this agency from my op opinion from the top to the bottom I, in terms of wherever the employee works at PSDA I've been very impressed with the amount of effort and heart and um, um, integrity that people here bring to their work in trying to carry out the public's mission in this agency's mission. So 
Um, I, I could go on. I think we could all go on, but I, I support the motion. I think a lot of work has gone into it from the committee's perspective, and um, and we'll just keep doing. We'll ju we'll just keep moving forward. Commissioner, or uh, I did that last time. <laughs> Mayor Beavis, I apologize. Just real briefly, and I want to clarify that um, although Greenlight failed miserably. Um, in my personal thing, and I believe probably everybody else's, I mean, we looked at the PSTA in its entirety, and to me, the green light was a very small portion of it. Um, and again, I, I get back to the six-month portion of this, I think, and, and the word confidence continues to come up, and, and I'm fine with the new uh, evaluation process. I think it needs to be revisited. I think it needs to be a little more detailed and, and explain to the, you know, the, the, the board as to what, what it is that we're grading. But then the six month thing kind of says, okay, we have confidence in you, but not for a full year. We want to come back and visit you in six months. And to me, either we have the confidence to move forward with Brad for the next year and let him perform a year. As somebody mentioned, you know, it's going to be Christmas before we know it. And uh, either we have confidence and we move forward and we develop a new evaluation process for next August or whatever it is, uh, or we don't. And, and, you know, I don't think that it's fair to to Brad, and I think you've done a great job, you know, in the recent, but we were evaluating on the past, but I think um, it's unfair to him to hold that over his head and, you know, he's, he's, you know, like hold, you know it's like hot potato. Um, you know, what, what's it going to be in six months? And uh, either we have the confidence to, to uh, keep him on and move forward with a new process or we don't and we evaluate him next year. And that's kind of my thought on the, the plan B. Is that a substitute motion or you just... What's that? Is that a substitute motion? Because I made the first. Oh, I, I, there was a discussion. I mean, we have the motion and I, I on the floor, and I'll vote on the one that's on the floor. But to me, either we have the confidence to move forward with the new, you know, the new evaluation as described in here, and 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 meet again next year um, in August, or you know, we shorten the time frame through the holidays, which is going to be difficult already, and and do it in March. So November. That's just my additional two cents. Let me just uh, make a comment, recognize myself to make a comment about the six months. I look at the six months a little differently. I know that we had some, some real bumps about the time that we were all filling out this uh, appraisal. And I, I, I think those bumps were correctable and we've seen a lot of correction at this point in time. I, I look at the six months as a chance to come back and look at salary action for Mr. Uh, for Mr. Miller, not so much a sort of Damocles hold it over her, his head. So I I see the six months as a as a in a different way than I've heard several of you uh, address it, and uh, that's my comment at this point in time. Uh, Commissioner Welch, I saw your hand. Thank you. Asked. I'll be brief. I I support the six months, but for a different reason. I'm I'm not looking at it from a salary perspective, but I, I think it's, I don't think it's black and white. I respectfully disagree with the mayor. I, in my view, it acknowledges that we have had some issues. And we I go agree. back to the taping of the employee and the ceasing of the Friday updates, which were part sure. of a package that we all approved over was here last year after the DHS issue. We said communication, proactive communication was important. Uh, and that ceased for a time and it complicated the problem. So for me, that six months is, is a recognition that we have had some issues and that we're not going to wait a whole nother year. Um, we're going to have an interim process where we go back and review this again. Um, and that's why, that's why I support the six months. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, Commissioner Long? Yes, and I was going to say everything that my fellow colleague, Commissioner Welch, just said. That is exactly the reason why the six months was put in there at the personnel committee level and then moved forward at the executive committee level. Because as a board, we have a responsibility to acknowledge the issues that have occurred, the fact that we had a flawed evaluation system, and that you've got to have a measurable amount of time to ensure that what we've put in place to hold Brad accountable for everything does not slip through a crack. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For that reason, I am supporting the motion. Commissioner Newton. Um, thank you. And I, I um, 
we'll see to make an original motion. I would just add that since it's been brought to our attention about the holidays, the major holidays, I would add that hopefully or amend my motion to exclude the major holidays. That way you will have truly have 180 days. Is so I mean, if you're going to stick to the six months, I understand what you're saying, but I mean, we accept that. <laughs> what I'm saying, what, what I'm saying is, concern is going to raise that we're going to be among the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, and that's going to kind of cut into what we're I, doing. So what I, I'm saying is, excluding the major holidays, I mean, the six months. I, I, mean, I, I would. <laughs> I, my guidance is here, if you really want to change your motion, since we've had so much discussion based on it so far, that you should make that as an amendment if you want to do your motion. Well, I was trying to amend that, because that, that did come up, and that's not, for the people, that's not comfortable, because like I said, and Mr. Council, I mean, Commissioner Welch is dead on, there were some, some concerns, so you want to come back and look at those, and, and to let it be known that this motion was originally made after a failed motion in the personnel community by Commissioner Long. And that was kind of her rationale for the six months, which she just spoke on. So all I'm saying is what didn't come up with anything about Christmas and holidays down there. But my idea was to get it, it's a, it's a committee recommendation to the full board for deliberation. And now that it has come up as an issue, we should take that into consideration because it's going to be hard to gauge six months when you're only going to be working probably 45 days. Uh, uh, or, I'm sorry. Uh, on advice from our legal counsel, if you wish to change something, perhaps you can change the date. If you look in option B, there's a, the date is specified as March 31st. If you want to give more time because of the holidays, you could propose an, amend, an amendment to the motion that would change March 31st to another specific date. <laughs> Second, or can either accept it or not. Okay. Yeah, put, put, put the from Page thirty, I believe. Um, okay. While well, you, if you want to contemplate that, I'll. I'm just looking at the calendar. Has any doing. questions or comments? I don't. Um, see I have my own. Uh, Vice Chairman. Thank you. I really wanted to hear what all of my colleagues had to say. I, I heard what I, I sit on both the personnel committee and the executive committee. I was the lone vote, the lone request to separate ourselves from Mr. Miller. And I felt that way, you know, a great heartache, but I felt that way because I looked at the tabulation of the nine out of 15 people being under a three, three in my mind being average and so anything under three would be below average. And um, it was a four to one. And um, then we went to executive committee and there was the discussion of option B and the, the idea of the six months um, I had a lot of concerns, and I'll just tell you what they were, and then I'll tell you where I've kind of come to. I, I, option B has, um, is getting us to where we, sh where Brad needs to meet our goals on the path forward, but he has also provided us mm -hmm. with a list of action items that he intends to take in response to all the comments that were on our review. And option B is saying that he will follow those things and implement those things. It also says that he will receive no raise and that we will reevaluate him in six months. So that's what we discussed at the executive board meeting, right? Um, before getting to that board meeting, what I expressed my concerns were was um, the tabulation sheet and the fact that it's incumbent upon this board and its members to move the organization forward, to move transit options forward, and to be leaders. And we had issues this year with whether we were going to get money from the state and the federal government, and we had a lot of issues 
with folks talking about this lack of confidence in the organization, in the leadership of the organization, not just Mr. Miller, but this entire board. And so I felt, when I looked at that tabulation sheet, that it was incumbent upon us to make a change, to try to reinstill re confidence in the leadership of the organization, especially all of the events that occurred that we commented on during during the um, uh, during this review period, and that's on my review sheet. And since that time, I've had a number of conversations with Brad. He has given us that document of things he agrees to do. Um, he's provided us with an improvement plan. Um, and I have sat here today coming with an open mind to listen to my fellow board members. Because it's not just what I think. We have to move forward as a group here, as a team. And I am the first person in my city, and I think my former mayor will, will attest to that. I don't mind being the lone vote. I have never minded being the lone vote. But I think we're going into such a critical year with where we're going with MPO and our relationship there and what we can maybe accomplish. We have the new union and what we can accomplish there. Um, We've had some new people on the board, but they will they are now christened almost a year old, if you will. We've got a lot of hard work to do this next year. So I am gonna go along with my fellow board members in supporting option B because I believe that we need this board needs to come together as a team. That's what I believe. And I believe keeping six months is extremely important for the reasons stated. We have had issues and we need to stay on top of those issues. Yes, we can come back at any time. Um, I don't think it's unfair to Brad. I've understood what's been said and I could take that hard stance. I could, I could blow that way very easily. But what's keeping me from going there is, is trying to get this board to be a team and to go in one direction together because that's the only way this organization is going to move forward. It's the only way transit is going to move forward. And so given that, I think, yep, six months maybe isn't fair to Brad, but it's fair to us as a board. It's accountable to the residents, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, it will keep Brad on his toes. I believe Brad has all the best intentions. Now I want to say you've got six months to prove it. And that's where I will vote. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Um, just a point of clarity. Are we doing, if it passes, we do it in March and then we do it again in August or will we change the, the evaluation time just for clarity purposes? I, I think it should be I every think six it, months. I think it's, uh, that is not, uh, has not been determined. I, I would interpret the motion as that's An not uh, set. Okay. So the board at, at in March would either decide to do it in June or, or do it following March. Okay, I just, just, just for just clarity, my, I meant to ask that earlier. It's just my. Uh, just in response to that question from Mayor Beavis, the Mr. Miller's contract does call for an evalu a yearly evaluation. I, I can't remember if it's June or July. So we would have to address that, uh, at least in terms of the contract provision that's no, required for another annual evaluation at that time. Okay. I, I have been waiting to make comments until <laughs> everybody else is on board. I, we acknowledge you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the reason for a performance review process is to ensure that our CEO is aligned with the objectives established by the board. And our major objective is to execute a transit system for the people of Pinellas County. Some of the things that have been accomplished or our uh, criteria for that 
are the execution of the transit system, the cost. We are one of the lowest cost transit providers in the county or in the country. Uh, we do benchmark. Uh, that benchmarking is something that Mr. Miller has brought to this organization. We hadn't done it before. We have a lot more performance measurements that we use internally and we track. Um, so I think there, our, our core mission here is this decision is not did we do, did he do a, some, a lead, a, the green light effort, which I don't think was really in his contract. His contract is to be the outstanding transit manager for the Pinellas. I think none of us are perfect, and therefore I expect some variations in a person's work performance. I know there are some parts of my job that I don't do as well as, as others. Additionally, I think that this board is blessed to have representatives from different perspectives, different backgrounds, and representing different communities. So I, I find some variation in the, in the ratings uh, historically uh, accurate and, and it would expect that. Uh, what is important is that we collectively take from this process information to improve the operation of PSTA for our citizens in this county. Some of, some of the things that we've said we want to do is improve the, the performance measurement form. Before we, we really were not down in the details and the guts of governance and so we just kind of, uh, it was okay. But this board this year has gotten into the governance and gotten engaged, so it clearly is much more important. And we had some stumbles. And those stumbles came at about the time we were doing that, and that uh, put some focus on the fact that our, our, our criteria, our form, could be improved and we should be moving forward with that. So uh, with that side uh, said, I uh, look forward to the evaluation <coughs> six months and I said before, I think that we may make some, some adjustment at that time, a positive adjustment. And I am going to be voting for the, the motion. And those are, uh, and again, we are going to be measuring against our path forward which is different than what our, our goals were a year ago. Commissioner Newton. Yeah, has I have a date now, if I may uh, make the amendment to option B. Um, it was originally uh, March 31st, 2016. Um, I would look at going to April 29th, 2016, which is 29 days to compensate for the major holidays and stuff in, in between. If that's, I mean, go to the second. Yes. It's, it's April 29th, the it's date of the April meeting then? It's a Friday. You want to go to the meeting? We can, it, it says in here, it says the um, criteria recommendation, a new assessment to be conducted uh, before the 31st. So it, be, it, will be, it will be before the 29th. Before the 29th. Yes. I'm just. So is there a second to that amendment? Second. The second to accepted it. So, well, okay. Okay. So, Mr. Parliamentarian, does that mean that the motion has changed? Yes. All right. We now have the same motion on the floor, except it now has uh, April 29th instead of March 31st. All right. Is there any objection to that change? Uh, Commissioner Gerard. No, just <laughs> can we vote? <laughs> I have a call for a... a Calling well, the question. I, the I don't see anybody objecting to that, so let's vote. All those in favor of the motion as amended to April 29th, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by saying nay. Nay. All right. I think that was Commissioner Eggers. Is there any other? Nope. Okay. So it passes 14 to 1. Commissioner Eggers? Yeah, I just want to make one comment. Uh, I and mean, I certainly appreciate the board, the board's perspective, and, uh, and, uh, and and also the hesitations that we had, and so why you have the seven months, I guess, review. Um, 
And so I, I would just encourage those of you who, who have had that hesitation but want that mid-year to, to stay in touch with Brad, as I think Brad's trying to do on a monthly basis, to make sure that you're giving him the feedback that he deserves. One-on-one, -on -one I think, is very important, and not wait uh, until the six or seven month. Um, and know this, that the board has spoken, and I, uh, as a dissenting vote, will be very supportive of Brad from here forward, and I will be working hard with my fellow commissioners to make sure that the plan is getting implemented as such. Um, and I really, again, want to say thank you to each of you for the, this is a tough process, but thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Eggers. I have uh, had a request for a five minute break. Um, no. Ma'am, your comments. I don't care. Ma'am, ma you are out of order. We will take a five minute break no. and no. come back no. at no. 8.03. No. No. I want you all to hear me. Come on back. As usual, I am you know what, the, um, the other thing that about pushing it back is I think it's weird to have the evaluation be right at the end of the legislative season and they can play with that. Well, you've got time for uh, the William Park thing in February 14th. You've got a lot of time for all that stuff to come together yeah. before you sit down and do play. Right. And I think, man, man, B was, man, 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 <laughs> no, I was proud to say you were uh, on the time that you were you were dead on about the get with him in between. Well, you were right on the time. Hold on, let's come in. Are you going to do a test? I just want to start with you. That was you that on. They said you talked to them before that. But I mean, in the committee, we just made recommendations.
I have uh, 803, so let's uh, reconvene the board. Uh, our next agenda item is the revised legislative agenda. And uh, Council Member Rice, are yes. you prepared to uh, lead the proposed change? I, I am. Thank you, Chair. Um, hopefully this is a pretty straightforward uh, action item. We're, we're asking the board to approve some uh, additions to both the federal and the state legislative priorities. Uh, the federal addition regards um, having us uh, look into um, grants for electric buses and to supporting the Drive Act, which um, in working on the, the, the House side to support the Senate version of increasing the uh, total available grants to 190 million. Of, out of that amount, 55 million would be available for no low, no dash low emission bus grants, which would be where we would apply for um, electric vehicles. So this is, I, I think this is a response, uh, a good response to being flexible based on strong community input um, regarding the electric buses. And then, and then the addition to our state legislative priorities is to um, increase the uh, state transportation disadvantage funding. And you'll see in your, your backup packet 
uh, staff put together a, a really nice looking one pager uh, regarding this and it shows how the transportation disadvantage funds has remained flat while the demand for TD transportation has increased by 70 percent and so um, this allows us to provide direction to our um, lobbyist and it allows us to include mention of both these items in our leave behind materials and I think it's where we can be flexible and accommodate um, uh, additions to our priorities so I I, um, I would um, ask for someone to second my motion to accept these changes to our legislative priorities for both the 2015-16 state and federal legislative session a motion by uh, Councilmember Rice and second, second by uh, Mayor Beavis. Mayor Beavis. <laughs> All right. Questions for Councilmember Rice? I don't see. Uh, yeah. Um, for the uh, we're going after these people. Does Van Skoyak go after the committee members and in, in the Highway and Transmission or in the House and Senate? And and will they be sending us notification of how this is going on? Yes. Okay. yes sir. And we have a trip planned to DC as well. Um, Brad, um, Commissioner Long, and myself, and Van Skoyak will be scheduling meetings with transportation agency officials and House members and Senate members and staff. And they will also be meeting uh, with uh, stakeholders on an ongoing basis. And it was we put into their contract that they would report back to us on an ongoing basis. Other questions, comments? Sure. Commissioner Johnson. Vice Mayor, excuse me. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, that uh, we had so much talk about what did and didn't happen is that uh, one of the things that, that did get by us that Brad has already um, started working on is that we missed out on some big dollars from the state that went to another part of the state that we couldn't get. This year, we will be there, and we will make sure that everyone knows. So that's, that's important, and those are the things that are part of our path forward. I'm just real excited to get there and do that. But sure. I just want to uh, thank uh, yes. Vice Mayor Johnson and um, the rest of the and the legislative committee folks, especially the folks that are going to go on these trips, um, along with Brad, to uh, to fight the battle on behalf of PSTA. I think it's going to be really important putting our face in front of these people, and um, I think we've got some real winning uh, members of our board going. Personalities. And, yes. <laughs> know how to work it and and so I, I thank them for that and thank you um, again vice mayor Johnson for bringing forward the to the issue not seeing any other hands rate going up um, is there a public comment on this agenda item I don't have any cards all right uh, we will proceed to a vote all in favor of the motion by uh, Council Member Rice, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, signify by saying no. That passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the next action item is the PSTA Transit Development Plan. Mr. Miller and Ms. Bolshers. Good evening. Hello. Every year we come to you with the Transit Development Plan. This is a requirement by the Florida Department of Transportation to look at how we plan for our agency and how we state what our priorities are. Um, these are requirements that we have in order to apply for grants from the state as well as receive our state block grant. Um, PSTA would fulfill these requirements regardless because of the kind of agency we are and as you know the robust discussions that this board has had over the past year discussing the path forward is indicative of that. Um, a presentation was given to the planning committee about the TDP and the major update that is before you this year. Um, I would have you refer to page 75 of your package where we have outlined 
what is required in a TDP and how we have fulfilled these requirements through our regular course of good planning and good action. The uh, planning committee did uh, have a presentation about the TDP and we discussed how all of the information that is in the TDP is reflective of decisions already made by the board. Um, the document itself was given to the planning committee um, on that day and you also all received a hard copy um, at your second budget hearing uh, a week ago. Um, you should have also received a link to the document if you were not at that meeting. Um, so the planning committee ha had received the, the presentation and asked to review the document um, so there was no formal action taken by the planning committee um, but to bring it to the full board um, for a final approval. This is due to the department on uh, October 15th and so with that I will take any questions that you might have this evening about what is in the TDP. Questions for Ms. Borcher? I see no hands up. I do have a question, Mr. Chair. Mr. Commissioner Welch. Yes, thank you. Cassandra, on page 58, help me understand, and I'm looking at the path forward, which I guess does not come up. <laughs> it's taped down, I think. Uh, <laughs> I heard somebody yeah. rip it off. I didn't hear it. Okay. It was me trying to. But I guess, you know, the community bus plan, I thought was mentioned in here, but um, I don't see it. But it's on page 57. Is it in the path forward? Um, I'm referring to the path forward guidance. Yes. My point, it, my it, point being. Yes, it's in the very beginning. In the path forward? The right path right forward here. is incorporated. So okay, page first 70. bullet. Okay, okay, that's why I missed it. Um, so I understand that's why that's in the, in the TDP. But why is green light on 58? Mm -hmm. also in the TDP. I understand the community bus plan. Mm -hmm. That is, mm -hmm. you know, our plan going forward. Mm -hmm. But why is green light still in this plan? Uh, that is in the section called the situation appraisal where we discuss all of the plans that we have already put together in the past and it, is, does, it does form the basis of our long-term vision. And so at the path forward when you talk about visionary service design there are elements of the green light plan. The bus element of the green light plan is the community bus plan. But isn't all of the bus element from Greenlight reflected in the community bus plan already? Yes. The, uh, you'll see on the next page that, sorry, go ahead. So I'm asking why do we need both? I mean, community bus plan, we've got consensus on as the path forward. Greenlight obviously was not approved. It's not funded. So mm -hmm. why do we need that page as well? It is a documentation of the work that was completed. You'll notice on the next page there's also the alternatives analysis. Okay. So and we're not saying in here that this is our plan. No, no, sir. This is analysis we've done. Yes, this is just a documentation of the analysis and the work that's been completed and the discussion of visioning. The, the uh, section eight is where you start to see the implementation plan. And I would say that that is the most important section of the TDP because this is where the department says to us, is it in your TDP? If it's in this section, that's the first section that they go to. So that is the 10-year implementation plan and has no mention of green light. Thank you. And page 93 is uh, our famous path forward. Okay. Yes. Other questions? Uh, hearing no questions, any comments? See no Vice Chair. Just as, um, from the planning committee's perspective, uh, we did talk about this, and um, as Cassandra mentioned, really the TDP is sort of a summary of all the things we've already approved. Um, but one of the dialogues we did have um, was how could we improve our process of working with the MPO on this plan and uh, we already do that so it's not to say that we're not working with MPO on this plan and that this isn't part of their their plans and <coughs> two artist plans um, but we just sort of rang the bell to say let's reevaluate let's look and see a little bit more how we how to make sure that we're not doing our plans in a vacuum 
and that it's not just a staff to staff thing that maybe there could be some dialogue from board to board or something like that to make sure that our transit development plan by by the name of it is what the overall vision of the county is from the county commission and the MPO's perspective so we just we had that dialogue and I thought that was important to share um, but we did approve this unanimously Any, any other requests? Uh, I would ask uh, you to vote on the approval. All those in favor of it, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, the uh, next agenda, I, uh, I'm sorry, I think I should have asked for public comment on that last <laughs> item. Is there any public comment? on the transit development plan. Seeing none. Yeah, um, Commissioner. Well. Yes, I just wanted to um, give an extra thank you to Cassandra for the remarkable job that she did today at the Big C meeting. Um, she's got a really great mm -hmm. way of messaging and talking about what we're doing and her presentation to that organization was very well received and I think she owes we owe her a great big thanks for making us look so good so <coughs> thank you Cassandra thank you, thank you. <coughs> she's great we've got a lot of great people on the staff uh, since there was no public comment the motion stands for uh, unanimously approved do did I miss something there wasn't. <coughs> ah. <laughs> Thank you for keeping us straight. I move okay. approval. <laughs> okay, there's a motion uh, by okay. Council Member Rice and a second by Mayor Beavis. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Uh, now we can uh, have our official vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, passes unanimously. Thank you. Appreciate your keeping us uh, honest. Uh, next item is uh, reports and correspondence. Uh, Mr. Miller, do you want to cover the PSTA performance report and updates? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. The, uh, the performance report is in your packet starting on page 86. Uh, August, we had a, had a strong month, second highest ever, but uh, le a little bit less than last year. The number one effect on our ridership on a month-to-month -month basis is the weather. And uh, we had a historically wet August, really? and that, that at least looks to be the reason that it was down slightly. Um, the golf course. The second, the second report in your packet is uh, called the DART Customer Service uh, Planning Committee presentation. Uh, a number of months ago, uh, after a rise in the number of complaints that PSDA had been receiving about its DART paratransit service, there was some comments here at a board meeting and Commissioner, I think it was Commissioner Welch and others that suggested that we get an up, that you all get an update on what steps are being taken to improve customer service within our DART paratransit program. <laughs> DART is, as you know, a very important program that is only for folks that because of a, a disability that they have, they cannot ride the regular bus. So they absolutely need this transportation to, to get around. And uh, PSDA has historically contracted that out to cab companies and wheelchair van companies. And in your packet is the PowerPoint presentation starting on, I think, page 90. Uh, 93. 93. If you'd like me to answer any questions about that, a number of initiatives have uh, been instituted over the past couple months. There's a new contractor, or there's a new owner of Clearwater Yellow Cab called TransDev, a national company. They've made some improvements. PSDA has instituted a new um, sort of incentive-based performance program to incentivize the new management there to um, make improvements, and we are seeing results. Complaints are down from eight a week to uh, one a week. So um, wow. again, things are looking good. That contract is um, out for bid and to be awarded our ends um, next October 1, a year from tomorrow. We're going to probably, since that's a major contract, it's 
close to $6 million a year, about 10% of the overall budget contracted out. Um, we're probably going to launch the procurement starting in January or February to, um, because hiring a contractor like that takes, takes a long time, so um, heads up on that. And then the, uh, the last uh, report is an update that your finance committee receives on a quarterly basis, a capital projects update, which basically updates the board and the committee reviews that about the status of all the projects in our CIP. There's some, I think, 40, 40 projects um, total, and, and uh, this is a, an initiative that sort of keeps the performance of our capital project management on t uh, in front of you. Uh, Mr. Miller, I'm very interested in the DART customer service uh, uh, metrics, and I'm wondering if, if at least for the next several months you could include a chart showing the, uh, the complaints on that uh, so that we can uh, just kind of make sure it, it is <coughs> in, uh, in good shape. Uh, if, yeah. if there's no objection from the other board members, uh, uh, Mr. Newton, I've a question. Uh, uh, I don't see any objection to that, so if we can do that, that would be great. Um, Mr. Newton, you had... It's on the same subject. Brad, what is, excuse me. You said complaints are down from seven a week to one a week. What kind of complaints are we getting, for instance? Late. Oh, well, um, we, we, we ha even though the... Um, the service is provided by contractors and you, uh, Yellow Cab at a Clearwater or um, um, Care Ride. Uh, we ask the customers if their trip is late, if they have a problem there, if the, trip, if the cab doesn't show up, to call and register the complaint with us. And then we have performance metrics in our contract with the vendors to that they have performance penalties if they don't, if they get complaints, if they don't respond to complaints or address them. And so those are the kind of complaints we get from, well, oh, my cab was late or... Um, but nothing about anybody in transit, like in a care ride, that had difficulties. We, we, we have yeah. very, very few, if any, uh, <coughs> complaints ever about care ride. Okay. We do get complaints. The complaints that we received and the issues that were addressed back in the spring were with the cab, the yellow yeah, cab. Yes, I'm glad you made that explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <coughs> Well, I, I think that, that Brad didn't uh, go ahead and say that uh, he uh, made some real changes to that and, and gave them incentives instead of punishment. And before, if you got bad duties, you got a punishment. Now, the better you are, the better things work out. So, and that has changed, as, as he said. And, and we're talking about upwards of a thousand trips per day in this county for dark customers. That's huge. That's a thousand para transit. In other words, people that have disabilities that have a hard time getting where they have to go. It's not like our regular stops where everybody gets on and off. So I, I think that, that Brad didn't say it. Brad, I'll say it for you. Thank you. It worked great mm -hmm. to, to take the complaints down that way. Mm -hmm. The PowerPoint also shows it's kind of interesting to note that uh, PSTA DART serves two and a half times more number of trips than Hillsborough County's equivalent service. Even though Hillsborough has a greater population, greater population of disabled folks, PSTA does serve many, many more people with, our, with that program as, as uh, Ms. Vice Mayor John <laughs> And at half the cost, almost half the cost. Yeah, that's right. Uh, are we at one more half the cost of heart? Central? Heart cost per right trip here. is thirty-three fifty-four. PSTAs is eighteen eighty-seven. Thank you, oh. Vice Mayor. Uh, Council Member. Another question. Yeah, you say it's a, about a, up to a six million dollar contract. What's the breakdown? Does it? Is it you know? Maybe a third to the cab and sixty to I mean, uh, and two thirds to dart. Are you doing a breakdown on that? I can get you that specific. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it might be about fifty fifty, but well, it's fifty fifty. <laughs> oh, everybody's doing it. Fifty fifty. Okay. All right. 
let's have Mr. Miller get the exact numbers <laughs> yeah, of right. email. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions about the reports and correspondence items? Okay, thank you. Moving on to future meeting subjects. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Uh, as you see on the page, the last page of your packet, 106, um, we are, as we mentioned earlier in the evening, uh, sort of holding out to have ample time to discuss at the October meeting the bus purchase deferred action. Um, and, and you can see that uh, on there. Uh, I might just take a, a quick moment to highlight uh, Commissioner uh, Rice just mentioned. We are planning a number of legislative <coughs> visits in the, in the month of October. We're going to Washington, D.C. next week. Commissioner uh, Long and Commissioner Rice and I. Um, Van Skoyek has, Van Skoyek and quite honestly Congressman Jolly are going to be our tour guides. Um, they are working together uh, to meet not only the Pinellas delegation but other com key committee chairs on that trip. And then later in the month, we are planning a trip, or at least I am planning and hopefully some others, uh, to go to Tallahassee uh, to, to speak with the Secretary of Transportation, um, Secretary Boxhold. And uh, Senator Brandis uh, has set up that meeting with Secretary Boxhold to um, show support and secure funding for our bus rapid transit project. So those are two things coming up um, also on, on, on the agenda. Uh, the one thing that I don't see on the agenda would be the uh, performance form uh, that we just talked about. That's right. Um, we will certainly be scheduling a personnel committee meeting um, early in uh, 2016 to, <coughs> take, to take a look at the form and then bring it back to the PSA board so that we certainly meet that. April 29th deadline. I will, we will make sure we add that. Just speaking for myself, if we get a chance to work on it before next year, that would be to get that process started. Yeah. Uh, I think as long as it's fresh in our minds, we might be better off trying to trying to capture that. So, okay. All right. Any other questions? Yes. I do. I. I have a tiny little favor I want to ask my fellow colleagues, um, and it's it's in regards to our upcoming um, nominating committee meeting that's in December, uh, or not the committee meeting, but the process in December. Um, my city, and this is by ordinance or rule, so I can't change it. Um, has a meeting in November every year to discuss appointments annually to boards for my commission. Um, and I was wondering if I could request or if that I could get board support to move up from de the December meeting to the October meeting, we don't have a meeting in November, to the October meeting to talk about our nominate, our committee nominations so that when I go to when I have my meeting in November that I have something to present if I have nothing to present I, I may not get reappointed to PSDA and so I'm just asking if, if I could get the some flexibility from from my board members to move up that process just a little bit it would give a month for the nominating committee to meet and everybody to respond to what their positions that they're interested in and that kind of thing. Make sure I understand what you're asking for. So <coughs> you'd like to have the decision on next year's a slate, yeah. officers be made at the October 28th meeting rather than the December 9th meeting? Yeah, because we don't have a meeting in, in November. And I did kind of talk to Rob, or to Rob, sorry, I'm thinking Rob DeSpirito, my city manager. I did talk to Brad about a month ago, but I guess it hasn't been addressed, so that's why I'm bringing it up here. I was just hoping that everybody could be 
a little flexible for me. If it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It just, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, Mr. Miller? If I, uh, I would just like to note that the, chair, the, the process that PSA follows historically, typically, is we have a nominating committee. Uh, the nominating committee currently is chaired by Commissioner Newton, and the, uh, appoint the nominating committee typically meets in November and then makes its, uh, brings its recommendation to the December board meeting, which is in early December, it's December 9th, because the new the, the positions and the committee um, makeups all start in January. Um, I did, um, as Commissioner Badowski mentioned, I did talk, she made the request and I did talk to, the, to Chairman Newton and we, we have set a nominating committee meeting for uh, right after the October board meeting, which is on the 28th, 20, 28th of um, October. So that's where it's currently set, but it, it would still come to your December 9th board meeting. But the recommendation from the nominating committee would be before your November meeting. Before the... the no, it won't. Why didn't... It won't. It'll be in December. Oh. But, oh I don't know I if I get to speak. I'm the chair of the committee. I didn't, see, I, I didn't want to uh, change the process that we already had in place, and I, I have been accommodating. I remember Ms. Bugowski, when she was running for mayor, they would, we held the, uh, the NPO slot open because by default, normally the mayor gets uh, on the NPO. But I think you wanted to have another member and yourself as a PSCA representative. So I have done something like that, but I hate to keep making uh, accommodations for this one individual. I mean, we all have different municipalities and we have to work it out within our municipalities as to where they pick and choose their individuals. I don't, I don't think it's fair. We did, I did do that. I remember directly a combination, if I'm not mistaken, was, was could we hold up on um, approving the, the, uh, the, nom, nom, the recommendations until after um, the, the election was over, and we did that. And then um, I think the NPO, uh, I think by default, the Dunedin mayor was on there, but you, did, you, you say you want to go as a representative of this, the, the uh, PSCA, and we left that position open and, 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 and made that accommodation. I think now we have yourself, another member, and, and, and uh, the commissioner ever on that committee. That has nothing to do with anything. No, but what I, 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 And I'm not really what, sure what you're referring to because I'm, in our city, we don't normally nominate the mayor to the MPO. And if this is a problem, then let's just not do it. I was just asking for a favor. Right. That's what, it. It's just the way my city does it. Right. But as, as nominating chair, what I was trying not to do was start just making exception to the process that we already have in place. I, I, I did do that, and we did hold those positions open at, at, your, at your request. And I to just, be honest, I did not realize that you did that last year. I, I really did not. I did not realize because we followed the normal process that we did last year. I had no idea you made an exception for me. I didn't request a, an exception. But but that's okay. If, if it's an issue, then let's let's not address it. I, I don't want to cause any... Well, I'm just saying, as stated, we have at least 15, not 15, but 15 different members and probably not as many uh, municipalities that do things differently. And, and I think, it, I, I don't know if we should change the process we have to, to try to fit when they're voting what they're doing. If they can make an accommodation, maybe we can send them a letter, Mr. Chair, saying what, what you're looking at doing. I, I mean, I understand her quagmire, but I don't see us changing the whole thing for one municipality. And the only reason I would ask, because I would <coughs> never ask this otherwise, is because I'm sitting here as vice chair. I'm not trying to make a presumption, but if there were a presumption to be made, I would be going to my November meeting and I might be not even returned to PSTA without the knowledge of what I'm trying to obtain. So it's just that. That's it. it it's my own issue, so we'll let it go. Don't worry about it. I, I don't mean to, I, I did not want to inconvenience you, Mr. Chairman. Would it, would it prohibit you from being vice chair if you uh, move, nominate me the chair for coming back? Your board wouldn't send you back if you're the chair? No. PS, they wouldn't do that? No. Wow. It doesn't work that way in my city. So that, that's why I was asking for just a little leeway. Let's not worry about it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to have made the request. Good question, Mr. Chair. Yes. 
Um, Chair uh, new of the uh, nominating committee. Yes, sir. So once that committee meets, you'll have a you'll have a recommendation to the board. Right. That's, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. So then you can you can transmit a letter. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the chair can do whatever. To the commissioners in Dunedin to let them know that your nomination is such. Not that it's been approved by the board, but right. the nomination <coughs> slate yeah. is, is going forward to the board for approval in December is such. You'll be able that's to what we, that's what we normally do. I, I think I'm, I'm only three years on the board, yeah, but, you know, but I think at least that would be a... I don't know how they work in, in that one, but usually in ours, we try to make a combination if we know someone's coming up to make sure they're there. That's just the way we do it. Well, Same thing. Everything's political. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, Thank you. My apologies for dragging on the meeting. Well, uh, we're under other business, and it's appropriate to bring up other business. And is there any other other business? All right. Move adjournment. Uh, <laughs> huh. Well, you got we have a mo we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Is there? I we traditionally do have comments. Yeah, is there anything that is overwhelming? <laughs> we, we have a motion. I, I, I have a comment. The, the, the only comment is Commissioner Rice's Kodak moment <laughs> with Commissioner <laughs> Newton. <laughs> <laughs> That was a thing of beauty. <laughs> I would like to make a comment. Yes, I mean, I guess, yeah. 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 Is there, uh, are you willing to uh, yeah. provide some? Yeah, I'm not going to deny anybody their ability to yeah. make a yeah. comment. That's what I have. Pass chair. I, and I'll be real brief, but I understand uh, three things. Brad, we are, most of us up here are evaluated publicly every few years, so welcome to our world. Yes, we are. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. And that's the truth. forward to the process moving forward, as Commissioner Edgar said. Uh, I understand this is Commissioner Holmes' last meeting. Uh, I want to thank you for your service. Thank you for being here. And, and uh, thank everything you, sir. That you brought to this board and ride home safely on that motorcycle. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, and finally, on a sad note, and Brad sent us an email, I want to um, send our thoughts and prayers out to the family of Terry Parks. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. He's our marketing and customer service manager and just retired a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. lost her battle with cancer. She was a great uh, person and a great uh, leader for this organization. And our thoughts and prayers go out to her family. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Welch. Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Welch, for, for, for bringing that up. I thought that's a great point. And Brad, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Absolutely. I think that was great. Having mm -hmm. deviated for past Chairman Welch, uh, I, I see a couple of small fingers up. Well, I had some comments. I don't know if you're going to, yeah. Uh, we, do you have a, we do have a motion in a second to <laughs> adjourn the meeting. I, I want that. Can we could I just want? I just want again to to uh, <laughs> <laughs> top on uh, Cassandra Borchers. Um, uh, we got her on the uh, Big C meeting the other day or, or today? this morning oh. today at eight thirty. Yeah. Eight thirty in the morning, <laughs> she was there, and um, she did do a great job. But the the real secret was I was sitting up on the dais and I could see what everybody was doing. So in the next presentation, they're, they're, everybody's going through this thing, but everybody's sitting there reading the, the handout that she gave them about where their the stoplights were. And <laughs> so it was kind of a, took away from everybody else, but it really worked. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again very much. Chair, you better go. Can I go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe these are just comments on the motion. Is that what they mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Discussion on the motion. The Commissioner Eggers, do you have any discussion on the motion to adjourn? Uh, other than the one I just briefly made. Uh, uh, Commissioner Diamond, do you have any comments on the motion to adjourn? <laughs> well, I, 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 just, I did want to make one brief comment, which is, or two brief comments. The first is that I want to thank the board members that are working with the that are on the MPO and are working with the MPO to help the MPO um, recognize that the working together uh, and not thinking in silos is, is critical for our long-term transit goals as an agency. And there are, a lot, there are a lot of people on this board and there's a lot of staff work that's going into that. So I think that's important. And then secondly, I just wanted to thank the members of the Legislative Committee, committee and Commissioner Rice and the staff. I feel more confident this year going into the legislative process that we have 
a game plan in place. We have um, materials in short form, long form, and I guess in Twitter maybe <laughs> to try to capture people's attention and um, and a lot of work has gone into that as well. So uh, thank you for a good meeting. Commissioner Scott? Nothing here, sir. Commissioner Rice? I just wanted to point out that something else uh, positive in today's meeting was what we heard from Rick Smith of SEIU and I want to be sure that we don't miss the importance of that moment because I think it signals a, a new era with labor relations with PSTA and our workers and um, I think I heard some very positive things and um, I'm very grateful for that. Echo. Ditto. And I got a comment on the motion. It, it's, it's very short, these accommodations that I haven't done since May, because I, I didn't get an updated list, only like 20 people. And I'll just read the names off. The, the following employees received accommodation, I think it says July. And it's Robert uh, Oliger, Dundre uh, Bass, Tawana uh, Beaches, he has two of them, James Cartier, Stephen Cruz, uh, Andre, looks like Seawick, he has two accommodations, Kim Groans, Ricky Henderson, Charles Harbert, uh, Claudison, jo Jocelyn, Stacy Knowles, Gary uh, uh, Kruger, Robert Law, Swaven uh, Massick, uh, Jermaine uh, Melville, Dania Ortez, um, Zelda Robinson, Solomon Rodriguez, Melanie Salisbury, Johnny Spratley, he has two, Lisa uh, Weatherspeed, uh, Cynthia Wilkerson and Rosalind Mims. Also, um, I want to add the, the kudos to um, Cassandra Bosch. Um, but people probably don't know through this whole quagmire of green light and the pack and all that. This young lady went through and had twins. I think it was twins. And she and, and she never missed a beat. I named one of them. I know it was twins, but uh, she she never missed a beat. Also, I received a personal call from a good, a good friend of mine, Tom, Tom Lutz, and he, he had a great member, great accolades for Jeff Thompson, excellent employee, very helpful, and uh, we just got quality people that's keeping this thing afloat, and I want to thank you for all you do, and I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Let me do that. Uh, Commissioner Long. I really don't have anything except to say it was lovely to see some of the staff here this evening supporting their administration and their management team. Okay. I thought that was very a very good visual sign that things are calming down. Vice Chair? I'm going to speak to the motion. I'm ready to adjourn as soon as everybody else is. <laughs> Second. Commissioner Holmes, you, any final comments? Oh, Lord. <laughs> you. Yeah, you got to go. And thank you, Commissioner Holmes. Yeah. It's been Very a pleasure perfect. serving on this board. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Gerard? Uh, ditto everything. Uh, <laughs> Beavis? I've got nothing. Uh, Commissioner Barkley, <laughs> Vice Mayor Johnson? I just have to. Bob Lasher? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh -oh. Y'all got a memo with 300 names attached to it. Bob has already been over there, started working with, we have over 3,000 people that live in the mainland that are not TV customers. Okay. They want to go to the mall and they want to go everywhere else. Bob is getting it orchestrated. He's already met with the people. Those are a lot of customers that we didn't know wanted to ride PS. They just don't know how, where and when. So we're going to get some more statistics about that. Commissioner Knighton? Nothing. Commissioner Red and Blue. Commissioner Welch? I'm done. Two things that I'd just like to say before we close. One is I'm very appreciative of Whit Blanton's support. To the motion. In, <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the US 19 Accessibility Committee where he supported looking ahead at the, our BRT plans rather than just looking at what's happening now. And the other thing is I think that the board uh, passed a major milestone when we made a decision about the performance appraisal this year and our vice chairman said let's make a decision and let's move forward and we did that and we have a plan and we have a path forward and we're going to do that and we're going to provide outstanding service to the people of Pinellas County 
And with that, we are adjourned. Yay! Yay. <laughs>